also let's record this for everybody that can make it. <laughs> um, but yes, thank you guys for joining today. Uh, we are talking tennis here for um, the next few minutes. So please, if you have any questions or anything, please do not hesitate to ask. Uh, we ask that you put it in the chat or in the Q&A so we can definitely get to it. Uh, one thing before we get started, um, we had uh, last week we had a training that we had to um, reschedule. So for March 15th, we have the injury prevention and first aid training. Uh, that'll be Dr. Wyatt from the Art from Artho, Arkansas. Uh, that'll be a great training for all of our coaches just to learn about um, injury prevention, um, contusions, dislocations, how to prevent it, how to treat it, everything, you name it, you can ask him anything. So that's going to be a good training. I'm definitely going to send more information out and remind you towards the end. But um, again, we are here to talk about tennis. And today we have Ebony Brown. Uh, Ebony is from Batesville, Arkansas. She's been coaching for about seven years, uh, teaching for about eight years, and she has been named the 2022 USA Games tennis coach for Team Arkansas heading to Orlando. And Ebony is also the area 16, area director for area 16. So without further ado, I will turn it over to Ebony. But just a reminder, if you have any questions, please put them into the chat or in, in the Q&A. Okay. Hey, guys. Um, so my first slide, it talks about tennis. And tennis sports season is usually around fall or the spring due to the weather. But um, if you're having a competition or a tournament, and weather's bad, that's when you can go into your indoor courts. But uh, Special Olympics Arkansas hosts a tennis skills um, and competition in May during state games. And state games is May the 12th through 13th. And this year we will have um, individual skills, um, traditional skills and unified doubles. Okay, so let's talk about ways you can start coaching tennis. And today I'm talking mainly basics. Um, so like if you have someone beginners or you're a beginner coaching tennis. So first thing you wanna make sure you and your athlete are comfortable with the courts. Know your athlete's skills and abilities. Um, make sure your athlete's holding the racket right. Get to know your color of balls and what's best for your athlete. And I'll go in more in detail on the next few slides. And most importantly, You have to make sure, oh, <laughs> wait. <laughs> okay, so the most important thing you need to do is make sure they're keeping their eye on the ball. That's one of the main things in tennis. Um, you have to watch for the ball. There's only one bounce. So that's what you want your athletes to do is just make sure they're keeping their eye on the ball. Okay, so here's a basic court tennis court and basic lines um you will see tennis courts that have more lines than this so because some some athletes will play on a shorter court but you have your center mark your net your baseline and then your single side lines and then the outer lines that's not marked are used for double sidelines Okay, so one of the most important things about tennis and like someone that's new to tennis is make sure they're holding their racket right. So their grip is very important. And so one thing that you need to know um, is that they need to use the handshake grip and they're just holding a racket like they're shaking someone's hand or also imagining um, they're nailing a picture in the wall. So like use it as a hammer. That's how they want to hold it as hard they want to hold it and like they're hammering a picture in a wall. Um, you can also modify these activities by using balloons to create success rate and bumps ups. And I have a video to go with this slide. Oh, Ebony Bear with me. <laughs> I was just gonna say, Irvin is controlling my PowerPoint, so it's not me. It is not. This is me. 
All right, let's do this. Um, PowerPoint isn't pulling up for me. Y'all still looking at the slides, right? Yeah, I got Okay. That. All right, PowerPoint isn't pulling. I mean, the video isn't pulling up for me. So I, if you need a copy of the video, I will send it to you afterwards. Just send me an email. Okay, it's just on how to hold the racket right or like things you can do to make sure they're holding the racket right. So very short video. Okay, color of the balls. Um, go ahead. Um, the first ball you have is the red ball. Red tennis balls are usually starters for starters and for anyone ages five to eight. Red balls bounce lower and they move slower through the air, giving that athlete a chance to set up and take a good swing. Um, if you're going to the store to purchase balls, they're also known as stage three balls. You can say red or stage three balls. Then you have your orange ball. Um, orange balls are also starter balls. Um, orange tennis balls bounce higher and move faster than red balls, but slower and lower than green balls. Um, so it's the perfect in between if they're advancing and those are known as stage two balls. Then you have your green, ball, green balls or green dot balls and you will see a lot of balls that have the green dot instead of a, just a green ball. They are similar to the traditional yellow balls, but they slightly, but with slightly lower compression. So the rebounds lower off the court after it bounces. And then you have your yellow ball and the yellow is the most common tennis ball. Um, players that reach the yellow ball have progressed through red, orange and green, and they're usually ready to use the full tennis court. Okay, so when you start practicing with your athlete, feeding is extremely important. And there's several different ways you can feed the ball to your athlete, but feeding is a way to introduce the ball and play during practice. It teaches your athlete how to make feeds to teammates and allow you to move around the court to offer tips and suggestions. <clears throat> okay, the first type of feed is the drop feed. Um, this is used to help beginners gain high success rate to learn compact points. So you stand directly next to your athlete and just drop the ball out in front of them. And then they swing that way. A dead ball toss, you stand with two to three feet of your athlete, toss at a 45 degree angle from you and it creates a space. It teaches your athlete to move towards the ball and begin working on correct footwork. The third one is underhand toss feed. This uses as a first progression on the side of the net. Good for beginners with difficulty making contact or tr tracking the ball. And then four, um, me and my coaches, we use a lot of this during our tennis practice is a coach feed. And this is where you start rallies and look for good grip footwork while tracking the ball. Um, you can hit a ball to them anywhere from the court and just expect for them to go for it and hit it back. Okay, serving. Um, serving is pretty important because if you can't serve, um, in an actual tennis game, the, the game will be over. Um, a serving tennis is a, short shot, is a short shot to start the point. A player will hit the ball within the racket so it falls at, onto the direct opposite service box with the, without it being stopped by the net. And then I have another video. No? <laughs> This one may work. Okay. See, can we see it? Sorry, bear with me real fast. Can we see it now? All right, so before you enjoy this video on the rules of serving, and and how it goes and where you got to hit the serve well i want you to notice that at the end of this video you're going to get a free course on if you've never served before how to start serving so you can start playing a match in your first week we even show you how to add a little bit of power to it so uh enjoy the video and at the end make sure to click on the link all 
All right, so we're not going to take anything for granted. I want to give you the rules before we get into our first lesson, the rules of serving. Number one, you've got two serves to get the ball in play. If you cannot do it within those two serves, it's a double fault and you lose the point. That's why we're starting with the two face and a couple other things I'm going to show you. Okay? So you go up there, you've got two chances, and you've got to serve to the smaller box. Okay, you don't have the one side, it's actually the small box across the court. So if I'm on this hash mark right here, guys, I'm on this hash mark, I've got to stand, and I always stand here, this is the deuce side of the court, this is where you start every game. And then I throw it up, and I've got two tries to put in that short box. Then after that, I go to the add side, and I'm serving on the diagonal that way. Okay, so that's the rules of serving. You get two chances, so it's very important that we become consistent right away. So we're going for more consistency than we're going to go for power in the beginning. All right, so now you know the basic rules of serving. Make sure to click the link or fill out the form somewhere here on this video or video page, and you're going to get a free course on how to start serving and playing your match. I hope you enjoy. It's just a little segment that we have from our main course, Tennis A to Z. It's Pete from Crunch Time Coaching, sign off and enjoy. Okay, so that video was just a short video on, on the purpose of serving and like um, you have two tries to get it into the diagonal box um, across from you. If you don't, they will get the point. Um, what to look for when you're teaching your athlete how to serve is foot position, correct grip. Um, ball toss is the key. So they want to throw the ball up before they hit it. Um, use cones to get consistency down um, during practice. And if you just see any beginners change, they will have cones all over the court and um, you want your athlete to aim for that cone so a good way to practice serving is put the cone in the court um, and then they can aim for that cone and then using the throw motion to start um, serving and so that's where they put the racket down just have them throw it over the net into the box Okay, scoring. In scoring, um, points, love is zero, one is 15, two is 30, three is 40, and then tie is all. So when you start a tennis game, um, the score is love, love, or love all. So that means both of you um, have zero. If I score the first point, it would be 15 love because I have 15 and then they still have love. Um, at our last U.S. game practice, I handed out Valentine's Day cards, and it says, we play tennis, so love means nothing to us. And I hope my athletes got it, because <laughs> in tennis, love means zero to us. So, Okay, tennis match. Um, how is a tennis match played? Each tennis match is made up of two or three sets. To win a set, you must win at least six games. The games are scored starting at love, zero, and go up to 40, but it's actually just the four point. From love, the first point is 15, and then 30, and then 40, then the game point, in which is game. So if you're starting with someone that is a beginner, you can just count one to four. Um, I wouldn't start them with love, um, 15, 30, or 40, unless you see them, like, you know, really want to compete in a tennis match. Um, and then... The two sets and um, there's three sets, sometimes depending on what tournament you play in, sometimes they're longer and then sometimes they're shorter. But on this link, the tennis rules, if you just Google Special Olympic tennis rules, Irv, can you click on the link? Um, this is the page for Special Olympics and their tennis rules. 
and on this page is extremely detailed about matches. Um, so they talk about double matches, unified matches, traditional um, single matches, um, the scoring match play. Um, so if you're looking for anything on how to actually run a tennis match for Special Olympics, all that information is on there, what color balls you should use. Um, if you need to get an international tennis number, it'll show you how to score that. And um, the key in sheet is on that page also. So if you need anything to do with Special Olympic tennis and how to score and matches is found on that link. And that link, like I said, you can just Google um, Tennis Special Olympics and it should be like the first thing that comes up. And <laughs> it's super short. Like I said, I just want it to be just the basics. Um, when you get into matches is, you know, you get more difficult and just a lot going on. So I just wanted to keep it short and just give you the basics today. Perfect. And greatly appreciate it, Ebony. Uh, here is Ebony's email, uh, ebrown at gobsd1.org. If you guys have any questions about tennis or anything, uh, you can definitely reach out to her. Uh, one thing just to reiterate, reiterate what um, Ebony was saying, as I say in all of the calls, um, there's only so much time on a Zoom call and so much we can teach with words and pictures and videos. So please do your research, um, download the, the tennis guide, make sure you look at YouTube videos, talk to other coaches to get that additional information that you'll need. Um, if this was in person, you would learn a lot more than um, from virtual trainings, but um, definitely remember to do your research and get more information, reach out to us if you need anything at all. Um, another thing just to touch on that Ebony said, um, with during summer games, uh, we will offer tennis. Um, we have been offering individual skills um, due to COVID. It, um, we didn't have summer games a few years ago, and that was the time we were really moving into tennis and getting it started within Arkansas. So we are back on track. Uh, for summer games this year, we're offering singles, unified doubles, and individual skills. So um, you should have received those um, in, entry forms for summer games today. Um, but tennis will be offered if you have any athletes that are interested. Um, but other than that, are there any questions or anything for Ebony? Um, if you want a copy of the PowerPoint, please email me. I'll send it directly to, to you. Um, it's a quick grab and drop um, from email. So please email me if you need the PowerPoint. But other than that, um, Ebony, great job. Thank you so much. That was amazing. Um, if no one has any questions, we got a few. Thank you, Ashley McAllister said thank you. Nick said thank you, Coach. Thank you, and said thank you. <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank y'all all for joining. If there's no questions, then we will see you all soon. Thank y'all for joining and good night. Thank you, Audrey.